This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini and these are your headlines. Cambodia will accept Ukrainian refugees. All airport restrictions have been dropped. And a traffic police officer has an awful lot of explaining to do. First, more on our main story. Cambodia will accept refugees from the Ukraine if they seek sanctuary within the kingdom, Prime Minister Hun Sen has announced. He has also called upon both sides to enter into negotiations and for Russia to reconsider its position, which has been condemned globally. The Russian ambassador to Cambodia told the deputy prime minister that Russia does not intend to occupy Ukraine but just wants it to be a neutral country and not to join NATO and said that Russia's military operation is to ensure Russia's security. But that statement is contradictory as the feeling within the EU is that NATO has now never been more relevant and even more countries are now looking to seek the security of being a member of the NATO pact. Anatoly Borovek, the Russian ambassador, said NATO had deployed its members in Eastern Europe, undermining Russia's security, and alleged that the Ukraine was racist, narrow-minded, and banned the use of the Russian language. This rather confusing statement went on, saying that Ukrainian leaders had also committed genocidal crimes against people of Russian descent in the Donbass state. He added, Russian military operations in Ukraine was not aimed at attacking civilians and avoided bombing civilians. It is aimed only at Ukraine and military bases, he told the Deputy Prime Minister. He also said Russia does not intend to occupy Ukraine. It just wants Ukraine to become a neutral country and not to join NATO. The Deputy Prime Minister responded, saying he understood the root causes of the war, and that was it was geographical, historical, as well as political. He added that Cambodia regrets the war between the Russian Federation and the Republic of Ukraine, and Cambodia's principle is to oppose any interference in the eternal affairs of any country. They are to respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of each and every country. He said, Cambodia also understands the security of the Russian Federation. In this regard, Cambodia hopes that the recent negotiations between Russia and Ukraine will reach some positive points and therefore will be able to reach a ceasefire and a solution in the very near future. For now, though, the bombs rain down on Ukrainian citizens who are left with no other option but to try and escape the continuing hammer blows of the Russian military. After nearly two years of restricting international arrivals, Cambodia this week became the first country in Southeast Asia to drop the requirements for both pre-travel PCR testing and on-arrival testing for fully vaccinated travellers. Previously, in order to enter Cambodia, visitors had to show a PCR negative test certificate issued no more than 72 hours prior to departure. It was also compulsory for them to take a rapid test when they arrived. But now the Ministry of Health abolished these requirements for fully vaccinated international travellers from all countries. This is a major step forward. In addition, the Ministry also announced that the Visa on Arrival scheme has been reinstated for all travellers who enter Cambodia by land, water or air. However, it urged travellers to do a rapid test on their own before coming to Cambodia. The Ministry went on to say, those who have not been fully vaccinated shall go into quarantine for 14 days in the centres designated by the government. These new regulations were confirmed by the Ministry of Tourism, which requested all those involved in the tourism sector to be prepared for the new standard. Prime Minister Hun Sen added 
that the government was dropping compulsory testing for inbound travellers to boost both investment and business, as well as tourism. The Premier added that doing so is also fundamentally for Cambodia to move forward with the goal of living with coronavirus. Hun Sen noted that although the new COVID-19 mutated variants, like Omicron, are highly transmissible and are now spreading widely in the country, the mortality rate is low. Cambodia has reported over 13,000 Omicron cases, but the vaccination programme has covered 92% of the 16 million population, and the death rate from infection has plummeted. These are certainly the first steps in reviving the tourist industry, but there is still a long road to travel. A woman in Phnom Penh has alleged that she was made to pay a traffic fine directly into a police officer's personal ABA account and received no receipt for the fine itself in what appears to be a most blatant abuse of power. There is even a screenshot of the transfer supplied by the complainant. It seems to show a bribe being paid directly to the officer with a complete disregard for the legal protocol, as none of the money would have gone to the government, but was transferred to the police officer for his own enrichment. In the social media post of March 15th, Monica Feb stated I had a problem on the road and was fined by the traffic police. The police stopped my motorcycle and even took my motorcycle keys, telling me that I was driving the wrong way. I admitted that I was in the wrong and asked him how much was the fine and asked for leniency as I had no cash. But I did say I had some money in an ABA account, so I asked him to accept 40,000 real. I opened the phone and clicked into my account, and he saw the funds that I had. He then said he would take my motorcycle if I did not pay him in full. I was scared, and it was agreed I would send him $50 to his personal account. Questions have been asked in the past about the practice of some traffic police in not providing official receipts for traffic fines. Last month, the Phnom Penh Police Chief Lieutenant General Sartet urged traffic police in all districts to issue official receipts, with every fine, saying, When people are abusing the traffic law, please explain to them clearly about their mistake with polite words and gestures, and all fines must be issued with a ticket receipt. Unfortunately, the practice of negotiating with policemen for fines is still very widespread, and in Phnom Penh, one can see many a street corner and at traffic lights, police stopping and fining people with continued enthusiasm. There are very few issues in this life that are more distressing than a child going hungry. And this is only too apparent at Angkor Children's Hospital in Siem Rip. They face a real challenge as the number of patients in intensive care has surged due to a rise in malnutrition, and many of them are children. Some of this increase can be contributed to the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic fallout that it caused. According to the report obtained by the Khmer Times, there were 496 children undergoing treatment for malnutrition, 296 others for moderate malnutrition, and 120 for severe acute malnutrition. Quite simply, these numbers are deeply disturbing. Director of Angkor Children's Hospital, Dr. Pektra, said earlier this week that some of the children could not walk and they are pale and skinny. He said the children needed surgery, but the intensive care units at the hospital simply lacked the equipment and they required five and a half a million dollars in funding for next year. He said the hospital faces many obstacles but continues to provide regular medical checkups and the best possible care for its patients. 
In the second half of 2021, they had completed 25,187 medical examinations and broadened their scope with health education for 91,000 people at villages and in remote rural areas. He went on to say, we also provide professional training to 18,000 health workers and medical care students. He noted that health education to people in the villages and remote rural areas increased to 142,000 people. It is here the focus should be held, to help prevent disease before it can take hold. It is also crucial to educate as to how a balanced diet can be attained on what is often a very limited budget. Pectra added that the vision of the hospital remains unchanged, which is to see every child receives quality treatment with compassion, whether they be rich or poor. Last week, we reported on the tale told by a Thai woman who had been deported for working illegally within the kingdom. She claimed to have fallen victim to a brutal organ harvesting gang. A Khmer Times investigation revealed that there were many errors and inconsistencies in her story. And now further investigation has revealed the truth. It now transpires that her incredible story was only to garnish sympathy and at the same time to try and avoid punishment for having crossed the border illegally. Her clumsy and somewhat idiotic story took flight when she was said to have passed a note to a Thai woman at the Cambodia-Vietnamese border. The main problem was her story was so badly conceived it was almost laughable. Two simple questions on their own were enough to see it collapse. Asked about when and where did she escape from, she had no recollection, nor could offer any information. Asked as to how did the taxi driver know where to pick her up from and how was it she was conveyed in an unconscious state but still managed to keep track of the situation, she again had no answer. Add to this the not insignificant question of who was the mystery person who rescued her. When asked this, yet again the simple question drew only blank stares. Cambodia is not alone in being accused of having brutal organ harvesting syndicates. On March the 17th, Malaysia similarly debunked an audio clip claiming that mass kidnapping and organ harvesting involving children had been occurring across their states. All of those stories were proved to be fake. The woman in our story seemed to have made only one tiny error. She completely failed to think of a story that had any credibility or the slightest connection with the real world. She chose to wander around in a fantasy land that was so ludicrous it could have been mistaken for the ravings of a lunatic. It was 100% guaranteed to fail. Apart from that, it was almost perfect. Now it's time to look at our sports news. The Welsh rugby team seemed to be in crisis after being beaten by the Italians in the Six Nations. From the peak of becoming Six Nations champions a year ago, Wales find themselves back in a trough after being embarrassed by the Italians at Cardiff. While Italy do deserve praise for a fine win, Wales deserves criticism as they should have had a firm grip on the game and dominated it. And this is not the first time we have seen this from Wales. Welsh rugby has been here before, and it's not just because the national side are performing so badly in this particular tournament. It is because past successes have been glossed over, and there are issues deep down that need to be addressed. The Welsh Rugby Union faces questions over its governance and many are calling for a fresh new approach as to how the game is managed in Wales. Now let's have a quick look 
at the Premier League in England. This week, we're looking at the lower half of the table because we're two thirds through the season. And it's about now those at the bottom start to get a pending sense of doom as relegation looms. And Norwich City are doing atrociously. They have lost all of their last five games, but our favourite team, Burnley, actually won one. Hurrah! So they are second from bottom. Watford, surprisingly, third from base. And Everton, the biggest of all surprises, they were a powerhouse in football only a few years ago. And now look at them. They're at 17th. Now it's time to look ahead and see what the weather has in store for next week. What we have is a story of two halves. Going up to Saturday, we have the threat of rain with sunshine. But on Sunday, just like a Russian leader, that threat becomes a reality because the rain will fall, including thunderstorms throughout the country on Monday. The humidity is going to be high and the temperature will reach into the 90s. This has been the Khmer Times News. You can contact myself at the studio by mailing us at ktnewsstudio at gmail.com. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by downloading our app from your app store. This has been Paolo Benini, and that was the week that was. I'll see you next Saturday for your weekly roundup.